Rights management can be strange. Intellectual property bounces around, changes hands, twists, contorts, and distorts. And this is how we end up with, say, Wonder Boy and Bikuri Man World. Carbon copied games only separated by a licensing deal. Take Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Mechanically, they're almost identical, and you can see how much each draws from frequency and amplitude. Here's the latest, Contraption Maker, a chaotic Rube Goldberg simulator that skips right past any comparison to Crazy Machines or any of the other Johnny-come-latelys in its genre. Don't be mistaken for a second. This is the true successor to the legendary The Incredible Machine, developed by the same team featuring the same mechanics with a new coat of paint and a few tweaks and updates. If you're unfamiliar with the very concept of Rube Goldberg machines, well, um, go watch the music video for OK Go's This Too Shall Pass. Not the one with Notre Dame marching band mind. You'll get the idea. Common household objects get used in uncommon ways to accomplish something mundane. You might need a complex series of lasers to open a can of cat food, a massive tangle of ropes, pulleys, belts, and hamster wheels to turn on a light bulb, or three seesaws and a bowling ball to launch a zombie into the moat. I just pulled every one of those out of my head, but thanks to the level editor, you can make them all a reality. A distorted, twisted reality. In fact, building puzzles is as much a focus as just solving the hundred or so pre-made challenges. You can set your official solution up however you like, set the victory conditions piece by piece, and then unlock whichever objects you want the player to have at their disposal. Why not throw in a few red herrings? Or a grill? Adding background elements to give your contraptions a bit of more pizzazz works the same way as placing pieces, just without all that pesky physics and whatnot. One of the most important distinctions to learn is just which pieces are affected by gravity and which aren't. Seesaws don't fall and can openers don't fall, but cats and cheese and basketballs do. As does this dude, Toolman Tim, which is a combination home improvement reference and a sly nod to the series predecessor bundled with a description of exactly what Tim does. Use tools like dog whistles, dog toys, decoy brains, and even a sled. Man, that's just asking for all kinds of winter fun, isn't it? If only you could submit your contraptions to, say, Steam Workshop so that everyone could enjoy them. Oh, wait, you can. Beats lugging around three and a half inch floppies like the old Incredible Machine. Yeah, I'm old, and a good number of you looking at this probably haven't witnessed the magic that was the Incredible Machine back in the day when It, Shining Force, and Mega Man X were the only games that mattered. Well, not to me, anyway. To you youngins, I say, play this game. It's damn fun, and it packs plenty of hours of fiddling around with explosives. To my fellow grognards, I say, play this game, because Tim's back. The actual, honest-to-goodness, the Incredible Machine, just now with regular updates, vastly improved level sharing, richer animation, variable playfield sizes, Honestly, I could go through the whole laundry list, but just interpret it as advancement in every vector. Granted, as far as music goes, the disjointed and eclectic soundtrack of the original only gets up to richer yet disjointed and eclectic, save for the damnable banjo and harmonica track that sounds like John Popper having a seizure. So drop the audio if you like, put on your thinking music in the background, and get ready to party like it's 1992. Which I suppose means you'd be listening to a playlist of Criss Cross, Nirvana, Right Said Fred, and of course, Adam's Groove by MC Hammer. Because Christina Ricci, just saying. <laughs>